Hey everybody, I made a video showing art concepts of Marvel superheroes, and since I have more, I decided to make another one. I talked about this in the previous video, but for those who don't know, I watched a video by the tuber Probably Spider-Man, looking for advice on how to design my own Spider-Man costume. Depending on what kind of story you're telling, he recommends to use logos and colors that reflect the tone and give your character a personality. For darker stories, try experimenting with more muted or dark colors, and complicated logos with pointed edges. For whimsical stories, experiment with lighter or saturated colors and rounder logos. My takes on Spider-Man are classic reimaginings with one shade of red and three shades of blue. Getting into other superheroes, I tried doing the same thing in various different ways. First, starting with Wolverine from the X-Men, I created four concepts, with each half based on two different versions. The first two are based on his classic yellow and blue suit. The left one has two shades of yellow for his torso, mask, arms, and legs, and two shades of blue. One is a more traditional blue, while the other is much darker, slightly muted, and contains lighter highlights to make it look black. The one on the right is loosely inspired by his X-Men Evolution suit. Sources say that his first outfit was inspired by his brown costume, but more angular, it has strappy boots, and uses the colors of orange and black. Though to me, it does look yellowish. Maybe they were going for a light orange that leans towards yellow. My influenced take uses a similar short sleeve on the shoulders, with the upper torso going down, but I've also added more yellow on the lower torso on the outside, which creates a couple of blue splits in his inner torso. These next two designs are based on his ultimate counterpart, where the X-Men use a black and gold color scheme. The left take doesn't completely use black-related tones, it also uses a muted navy blue, which is mostly used for the torso and legs. The outer torso, upper legs, belt, gloves, and boots are the ones that are more black. Finally, those gold crescents, curves, or whatever, are an accent color. The one on the right, on the other hand, has more muted shades for a darker take. Honestly, as much as both of these work in different ways, if I were to pick between the two, definitely the one on the left. Not just because of the color scheme, but there's something about their placements that I like, too. Moving on to the fan-favorite merc with the mouth, Deadpool. Though I'm aware he's more of a wisecracker and anti-hero, the one I'm more familiar with is his ultimate counterpart, where he was literally a villain. In the arc of those comics, he captured Spider-Man alongside the X-Men and took them to Krakoa, an island where he's running a live TV program of killing mutants despite being one himself. In the video game Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, they rewrote him with a combination of his ability to see past the fourth wall and comical nature from his mainstream version, with his appearance, background as a mutant killer, and host of live TV from the Ultimate Universe. I've been thinking about writing a story exactly like that, which is why my drawings look like Ultimate Deadpool, but over time evolves into an anti-hero. He was a bit tricky for me to work with because I was struggling to choose between more than one red tone, black tone, or what I was going to color with those. Things like red gauntlets or black gauntlets. Were his boots going to be red with red shin protectors blending in with them? Or black boots with red protectors for extra complexity? Then on this fifth take, I created one with two black tones, with one of them applied to his protectors for his wrist gauntlets, shoulder pads, and knee pads. So far, I quite like this one. Next, one of Marvel's more goofier villains, Leapfrog. He first appeared in Daredevil number 25. The reason Vincent Patilio became a crook was because he failed to profit as an inventor for various toy companies. Donning a frog costume, 
His boots contain electric coils that allow him to jump 60 feet at a 45 degree parabolic, which reaches 15 feet at the apex, or 30 feet straight up. Some versions also use a powered strength enhancing exoskeleton, which gives the user the ability to lift one ton and gyroscope stabilizers controlled by a computer. Usually when he tries to commit a crime and he runs away from a hero, he ends up breaking one of his legs. Design-wise, I get that Stan Lee wanted this character to be silly, but over the years, I don't think it aged well. I feel like if you were to have a direct adaptation of that suit, he might look like a theme park character. Though I could just be saying this because Marvel has been modernizing their characters in their movies and recent animated shows. So that's what I tried to do. The first trick was to redesign his iconic mask. Since my characters have an anime-influenced look, I tried searching for anime frog-like characters. One of the most popular ones is Froppy from My Hero Academia. Some pictures feature her wearing these goggles on her head, so I tried applying those to a motorcycle helmet. But regardless of how many adjustments I made, it just didn't look right. I think the reason these early tests didn't fit the anime vibe is because I was over-relying on his MCU design. At that point, I learned that live action and animation give different atmospheres. So I kept searching for other anime frog looking characters until I came across this Mega Man suit. It's called Toad Salt. So I referenced this to round Leapfrog's helmet and used highlights for his eyes. Then I've made about three experimentations. The first concept had the inclusion of leg extensions as I thought it would add more power to his leaps. The second concept removes the stilts and uses more seam lines, giving it an exoskeleton look. This third design is by far the most accurate because of the large belly, and I had the idea of him eating lots of sweets when he's not on missions, rather than it just being naturally a part of the suit. I also liked the extra seam lines from the second, so I combined the two for this fourth picture, along with Stilt Man slapping his head in disapproval. As you may have noticed, the color scheme used here are two shades of green, one yellow, and one orangey red. For Symbiote Spider-Man, he's drawn with blue, white, or purple highlights depending on the artist. Personally, I prefer purple, much like his Ultimate comics. I don't mind anyone who uses white or blue, but I think sometimes the latter can be confused for a dark blue, although I have tried a blue tint once. When I saw the trailer for Marvel's Spider-Man 2 on the PS5, I noticed muscle lines and fleshy bits on the suit, which looks like an alien mixed with an armored exoskeleton. So I've tried that a couple of times, but more simplified. Sometimes just mimicking the classic costume without messy webs, or a mixture of both. I've even experimented with two shades of blackish purple, one being lighter where there would be red, and the other as darker where there would be blue. I tried a couple members of the Brotherhood of Mutants, which include Magneto, Mastermind, Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, and Toad. So far, I only have three designs for Magneto. On the first take, it's a mixture of his classic outfit and ultimate outfit, using red, purple, and black. On the second and third, they contain two red tones and two purple tones. One looks straight up like cloth, and the other looks like armor protection. As for Mastermind, I have a custom black suit design. I was thinking about him doing more formal stuff like smoking, drinking, and more when he's not going on missions. Though I have an alternate drawing where he has a more faithful suit. For Scarlet Witch, I drew her wearing a gothic-influenced look 
with dark colors as a member of the Brotherhood of Mutants. If you look closely at her headpiece, the center has a bit of a skull face with a little bit of pointy edges that look a little bit like teeth. When she joins the Avengers, she dons a costume with slightly longer sleeves, brighter colors, and the skull has been removed from her headpiece. I actually have two different concepts where one uses more pink shades than red shades. For Quicksilver, I used a dark green sleeveless hoodie over a long sleeve lighter green shirt and regular black jeans. Since he along with Scarlet Witch are reluctant villains, I thought maybe he should wear something that doesn't look too super powered while still faithful. But when I did his blue and white suit, I thought maybe I should try something like that for his green suit. In fact, looking at these more closely, I noticed that even if a villain is reluctant, they still need to look super powered. Plus, with details on Scarlet Witch like the headpiece, they would probably contradict each other. Anyway, lastly, Toad. I based my take on, once again, his ultimate appearance, where he has green skin, with the addition of darker green spots, two blue tones for his suit, and I based his eyes a little bit on Zancro's from Fairy Tale. After reading some X-Men comics, I decided to try out the mutant exterminating robots, the Sentinels. They have a couple different color schemes depending on the artist. Not too different, but some use pink and purple, and others use pink and blue, which is what I used. Their faces could be peach or light yellow, and they have wires showing off in some areas. I used two shades of a bluish gray to color them. I thought that by doing it this way and unevenly, it would look like multiple types of wires powering them up. Last time, I talked about an idea I had for the Fantastic Four. It was giving them these prototype costumes when they're students of S.H.I.E.L.D. Academy. I've read some of the Ultimate Fantastic Four comics, and Reed Richards was associating the team with fire, air, water, and rock. So I thought, what if they had costumes with colors that reflect the exact elements before they officially started the team and created their classic costumes? Kind of like MCU Spider-Man. Like the Web Slinger himself, I tried using multiple shades of the colors I was using for the elements their powers were similar to. Since the thing is the humanoid rock, the colors associated with Earth are green and brown. So I went with three green shades and a reddish brown as an accent color and for the logo. Obviously, the Human Torch is a fire-powered character, so he has to have fire-based colors, and I thought that, design-wise, it should look a little bit like Spider-Man's suit, where the upper torso, gloves, and boots are orange with a yellow outline, while his arms and legs are blue. The reason for this is because they're best friends in my vision. They've been going to school together before they got their powers, and Johnny wanted to be like him. This is loosely based on, yet again, the Ultimate Comics, where, instead of envying each other, they had great respect for each other. Invisible Woman can vanish into thin air. On a source I read, it listed four different colors for it, including blue, white, yellow, and gray. One could imagine blue represents the sky, yellow for the sun, white and gray for clouds, or white alone for air, since it's colorless. So I decided to use three shades of white and applied an eye with a no logo on top of it for a symbol of invisibility. Finally, Mr. Fantastic, who has four shades of blue, the color of water. Although his powers aren't directly water-based, the way he stretches and morphs works just like the liquid itself. For the logo, I used a water drop with a couple of wavy lines to make it look like elasticity. Lastly, I tried doing the girl band, the Mary Janes. 
featuring Mary Jane Watson, Gwen Stacy, Liz Allen, and Felicia Hardy. In recent versions, they've been making Gwen another Spider-Woman titled Ghost Spider, and she's been struggling to balance life of a superheroine and drummer in a band. In the comics, it usually includes Glory Grant and Betty Brant, which I've removed and used Liz Allen. So far, I'm writing MJ as the lead vocal and guitarist, Gwen as the drummer, Liz as the bass guitarist, and Felicia as the keyboarder. The only drawings I have for that right now are the overall designs and Mary Jane playing a guitar. Well, that should be it for now. I'm also uploading some bonus drawings not featured here but on my community page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video.